Fear of the own unknown and of being alone is something we all struggle with at one point or another. Fear of someone or something watching us hidden in the shadows or that something might harm us. Fear can make us run away or make us do crazy things. Being alone in a strange new place can make fears worse and cause us to do the unspeakable. On today's show, we'll be talking about a story filled with confusion, strange happenings, and the death of a young woman who left more questions than answers. Beneath the Waters, the Elisa Lamb story. Elisa Lamb was born April 30th, 1991 to immigrants from Hong Kong who settled in Canada and opened a restaurant just outside Vancouver. Elisa would later go on to enroll at the University of British Columbia in Vancouver, Canada. However, when she headed for California in 2013, she wasn't enrolled in any classes there. Elisa found a relief and an escape online. She was an avid blogger, posting the unusual images of fashion and quotes about her struggles with mental health as well as her daily life happenings. Prior to her trip to California, Elisa had been struggling with mental health issues. She was diagnosed with bipolar disorder and depression at the time of her death. She was on four separate medications to help her with her conditions. Her family would later say she had never attempted suicide and never showed any signs she had ever considered such a thing. By January 13th of 2013, Elisa took off to the road and planned on making a solo trip to California from her home in Vancouver. As a deal with her family who worried about her traveling alone, she promised to call them once a day. After a short stop in San Diego, she traveled to Los Angeles, and on January 26, she checked into the infamous Cecil Hotel. While I won't go into full details about the hotel, it's a piece of old Los Angeles and was originally built in the 1920s. By the 30s, after the Depression, the hotel had hit hard times and never seemed to bounce back to its former glory. In 1964, a woman was raped and murdered in her room, and to this day, the case is still cold. Richard Ramirez, better known as the Night Stalker, also rented a room and stayed there during his active years as a serial killer in and around Los Angeles area. I have a three-part series on Richard. If you would like to hear his story and his crimes, please listen to them in the playlist. The hotel was home to many suicides as well. However, besides the dark history, it had been renovated and is still open to the public. Elisa was initially assigned to a share room on the hotel's fifth floor, but after complaints from her roommates to the staff about her odd behavior, she was moved to a room on her own two days later. She had contacted her parents every day while traveling, and on January 31st, the day she was scheduled to check out of the Cecil, and leave for Santa Cruz, they did not hear from her and called the Los Angeles Police Department. Hotel staff interviewed said they had seen her and she was alone. The last known footage of her is the infamous elevator video, showing her peeking around as if watching for someone or hiding and behaving strangely. Some people have said someone might have been after her, Some attribute the behavior to her mental disorder, and others have claimed the paranormal had something to do with it. Police searched for her unsuccessfully, and even the canines were unable to pick up her scent. Flyers were passed around the area and online in hopes someone would know where she was. 
On February 15th, LAPD released the video from the elevator to the public, and the video went viral due to the strange nature and leaving many who watched feeling unsettled. On February 19th, Elisa's body was found after hotel guests complained the water had turned black and had a strange taste to it. Her body was found in one of the 1,000-gallon tanks that provided water to guest rooms, a kitchen, and a coffee shop. On February 21st, the Los Angeles Coroner's Office issued a finding of accidental drowning with bipolar disorder as a significant factor. The full coroner's report, which wasn't released until June, stated that her body had been found naked, her clothes were found floating in the water, her watch and her key room were also found with her. It also stated that her body was moderately decomposed and bloated and that her skin becoming mostly greenish with some marbling on the abdomen. There were no evidence of physical trauma, sexual assault, or suicide. To this day, her story is one people find strange and creepy, with many questions, with more questions than answers as to how she got in the tank. How did she manage to get up there without anyone seeing her? and lifting such a heavy lid on the top of the water tank. Thank you all so much for listening. If you have any recommendations, please feel free to comment or contact me. I'm on all social media, and they are linked on the page. Please feel free to leave a like and rate and review if you like. I'd love to hear from you guys as well as your thoughts on the case. Please be respectful to the parties involved, and until next time, take care.